And welcome to this week's cruise chat. I'm Kathleen Penner, owner of Plenty of Sunshine Travel. And today I'm joined by Kara and I'm super excited to meet with her. She is from Cork, as you can see. I've had the opportunity to meet with her a few times. So I have a playlist for each and every cruise line I meet with. So do go back and look at those after we're done watching this because there's some really, really great content in there that I want you all to see. But today, obviously, we're going to be covering some beautiful parts of our world. So I'm just going to turn it over to you. Great, Kathleen. Thank you so much for having me. And I'm delighted to chat about the bottom of the world today, a little bit about Antarctica. Um, but before we do that, why don't we show a little video to share what Cork Expeditions is about? Awesome. Why travel with yes. Cork Expeditions after watching a little video like that, a little snapshot? Mm -hmm. Well, Cork Expeditions was the first company to actually take travelers to the North Pole back in 1991. So we've been in business for over 30 years. And we actually were the first um, to bring commercial passengers on a full circumnavigation of Antarctica as well. So we only do polar exclusively. We go to the Arctic and Antarctica. We don't go anywhere else in the world. Mm -hmm. We are not a cruise company, a traditional cruise company that dabbles a little bit in the Arctic and Antarctica. We are specialists in these regions. We don't go anywhere else in the world. So say uncompromisingly polar 10 times fast before your morning coffee. <laughs> and that's a little bit of a tongue twister. But that is really what separates us from a lot of the other operators that are in these regions is the fact that we're specialists and this is all that we do. Um, we have three little expedition vessels in our fleet. So when we're in these regions, we're maneuvering around small little expedition vessels, all under 200 passengers. We have ships that are 128 passengers, uh, 172 guests, all the way up to 199 and so what I really advise everyone, Kathleen, and I know you're really well versed in a lot of different types of sizes of vessels mm -hmm. um, and cruising in general with our cruising passion that we both have. Uh, but what's really unique about having small little ships all under 200 passengers in the polar regions is the fact that as soon as you have a ship that's 250, 300, 500 passengers in these really remote areas of the planet, mm -hmm. it really impacts the experience because some of these little ships can get where the larger ships actually can't. And also on the larger ships, not everyone can get off on at the same time in these right. regions. Yes. And the whole point about being on these little ships is to be able to get off as mm -hmm. much as possible and explore the regions uh, that we're in. That's incredible. I love that because it can pull right up to it and you can kind of explore and dig deeper, right? Mm -hmm. And that's what we want when we're cruising and exploring. You want to learn more about the area you're going. You want to dig deeper. So I love that. That's great. And that's so true because if guests do want to stay on board for a particular afternoon, let's say, they absolutely can enjoy the gorgeous amenities like the spa on board the Ultramarine or the World Explorer um, and have those moments. I went to Antarctica for the first time with my 66-year-old aunt, my Aunt Lucy. Yeah. And there was one afternoon where she wanted to stay on board after a great morning. And mm -hmm. she stayed on board one afternoon and went through her photos and pictures and had a mm -hmm. happy hour while I went with the long hikers. And then we could come back together for dinner 
And I was asking her about her afternoon and what she even saw from the comfort of the ship, because there's gorgeous scenery Mm -hmm. and wildlife that can be witnessed from the comfort of the ship itself. The ship, Kathleen, really is some of the best viewing platforms for Mm -hmm. the scenery and wildlife in these really remote locations. But what I wanted to share with you, Kathleen, is the fact that we have fantastic expedition team members that are with Cork Expeditions. And this is another really big differentiator because we have the most experienced team in the polar regions uh, with our ratio of being one expedition team member to five guests. That's not ship crew alone. That's Mm -hmm. not ship crew, dining crew. That's the expedition team only. So really intimate experience this creates on board. Mm -hmm. So if people are thinking of traveling to the polar regions, Having this experienced team is excellent because they're not only giving educational programs throughout the trip. Uh, We have historians, glaciologists, Mm -hmm. biologists. We even have a penguinologist that comes. (laughs) Wow, that's great. Antarctica. Yeah. Uh, So they're not only giving great educational programs throughout the trip, but they're actually driving the zodiacs, going on landings Mm -hmm. uh, with the guests. And they're also, what I loved, is out on deck. Because sometimes when we're repositioning the ship, it's amazing what you can see when you're traveling in these areas, going from point A to point B. So I love the fact that the expedition team members are around constantly in their designated field, giving their expertise of what we're seeing. Right. Our expedition team to Kathleen are also dining with all the guests at dinners and lunches. They're around. They can sit with guests. And I find some of those stories to be mm. so fascinating. And it sometimes is a highlight of my trip when I'm traveling with Cork Expedition team are the actual expedition members themselves. Right. Yeah. Cause they have so many stories and so much knowledge that they're just willing to share. And, and that's incredible because yeah, that's just fascinating because you get to learn all about the animals, the culture, like everything there. And that's great. And these yellow park guys mm-hmm. that we're seeing on the right there, those are included with every guest trip. So this, these are included, there's a Mm -hmm. liner in um, underneath as well. So that's a gift from Cork Expeditions for every passenger. Uh, We also supply muck boots on all of our trips. So they're great. um, They're Canadian muck boots, they're waterproof, they're durable, they've got great tread on the bottom. So those are two less things people need to pack when they're Mm -hmm. traveling uh, to the polar region. So a lot of people get fixated on that yellow parka and wonder if it's included. So I thought Kathleen and I'd get that right out of the way. Absolutely. Yeah. And what a great uh, memento to have. And then, you know, you can wear it and be like, I was here. I went up there because it's like a rite of passage to get those jackets, right? It really is. That's what I think. And I even, I'm based in Toronto. We are a U.S. based company, um, but I live in Toronto and even uh, this past winter, I would be outside walking my dog in my yellow parka or going to High Park, a uh, local park in Toronto, mm-hmm. and I would be wearing my yellow parka. So it's kind of fun spotting people uh, globally with their yellow parkas on. Yeah, that would be great. So let's dive down to the bottom of the world, to Antarctica, mm-hmm. the fifth largest continent on the planet. And I love maps, Kathleen, and I just wanted to share this map because there are a lot of different types of trips that Cork Expedition does to mm-hmm. Antarctica. We have trips as little as eight days with a fly cruise program where people can actually explore Antarctica without sailing that day and a half to two days in each direction of the Drake Passage. That oh, if you Drake can passage. skip that, I'm happy. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Goodness. Right? Because sometimes I get seasickness. I've done it quite a few times, but it's nice to be able to have the luxury of flying uh, skipping the Drake, if if people actually are short on time but still want to see Antarctica or simply get seasick, it's a great yeah. option with our fly cruise program. Yeah. But then we have the traditional trips uh, that are 11, 12 days, um, all the way up to 23 days that include these sub-Antarctic regions like the Falkland Islands and South Georgia. So there's so much um, that Cork Expeditions offers in Antarctica because we only do polar travel. Mm -hmm. And we travel typically at the end of October, beginning of November in Antarctica, all the way up to the beginning of April, um, the end of March. So just depending on what people want to see and do when they're going there is a great opportunity to um, know when they want to travel. So for Mm -hmm. instance, if someone wants to see the little chicks, the little penguin chicks like right here, 
typically they hatch at the end of December, beginning of January on the mm-hmm. actual peninsula itself. The peninsula mm-hmm. is that finger of land that we saw on the map sticking right. up to South America. So a lot of people like seeing the chicks, but I'm a whale person. I grew up on the West portion mm-hmm. of British Columbia. So I love seeing whales in February and March in Antarctica, knowing that so many had migrated down to Antarctica for the Antarctic summer. Mm-hmm. So there's no bad time to go. Right. So typically speaking with the Antarctic Peninsula, we're getting off the ship at least twice a day. It mm-hmm. is so stunning. It's absolutely gorgeous. Um, I really believe that if someone can maybe walk their dog, Kathleen, you and I have dogs. We were talking we about those the last time yeah. we saw each other, our amazing creatures. If people can typically walk their dog once a day comfortably, I really do believe that that's someone who's fit enough to go on a type of trip like this. We have really active travelers with cork expeditions, but also leisure travelers as well and everything in between. So I don't want people to think as soon as they hear expedition that going to Antarctica might not be for them. Mm -hmm. Um, There are, there's a little something for everyone, but the penguins typically are the stars of the show in Antarctica (laughs) uh, on the actual peninsula itself. We see like a deli penguins, chin strap Mm -hmm. penguins, gentoos. And so what I wanted to share with everyone is the fact that with the Antarctic peninsula trips, We have the eight-day voyages that Mm -hmm. fly across the Drake Passage that start in Punta Arenas, Chile, Mm -hmm. and fly over to Antarctica, where a luxurious ship, the World Explorer, is waiting for all of our guests, and then have a great trip that's around four days, depending on weather, and then we fly back to um, Chile, to Punta Arenas on day seven, and then on day eight, people can either explore other areas of South America, maybe go to Easter Island or Atacama Desert, because sometimes the trip, you don't want the trip to end. But then, of course, those that we're we're talking about that are short on time can just fly home back to North Mm -hmm. America or wherever they're from. Um, But this is the typical uh, bread and butter trip. This is the most popular voyages or Antarctic Explorer, Kathleen. Mm -hmm. And a lot of uh, people who are first timers to Antarctica typically take this trip. A lot of operators, Kathleen, are going to this finger of land, the Antarctic Peninsula, because it's the highest concentration of wildlife in addition to a very close proximity Um, to South America. So it is easy um, to get to. So I wanted to share with everyone that if people are thinking about going to Antarctica, an 11 and 12 day trip is a great place to start. Okay. Or our 13 day trip that includes Antarctica, but also uh, Patagonia on the way home, Cape Horn. Yeah. And Diego Ramirez. I was just watching um, the Volvo World Cup the other night, just for a brief moment. And some of those sailors were sailing and racing around Cape Horn. So this is a great, safe way on a lovely ship, on a premium ship, um, to be able to experience areas of Patagonia and get off and explore. Uh, So I did want to mention that there's that opportunity too. But what I really wanted to speak today about with you, Kathleen, that I'm Mm -hmm. so excited about a 14-day itinerary, our Emperor Penguin Quest trip. Ooh. an expedition to snow hill so this is exclusively on our new ship the ultramarine yeah. but i was so excited to talk about the fact that back in 2004 kathleen cork expeditions actually made polar history uh we conducted the first ever ground visit to a remote emperor penguin colony near snow hill island in Ooh. antarctica well, that's so a good driven wow. by a true expeditionary spirit, Kathleen. Mm-hmm. I get so excited. And uh, by guided by years of polar expertise, um, we're actually bringing this trip back this November. We're having two trips where guests can see numbers of over 4,000 breeding pairs of emperor penguins. Wow. That's so, incredible. emperor penguins yes. are the largest penguin species mm-hmm. on the planet. And Kathleen, have you seen that movie, March of the Penguins, where Morgan Freeman narrates? No, I haven't. I'm going to need to put that on my list. Highly I recommend thinking. it. I think it came out around 2005 okay. uh, when I saw it in the theater. And it's extraordinary. Mm-hmm. Uh, definitely, I think, helped put Emperor Penguins um, on the map. And so I think also partially because of that um, great documentary uh, mm-hmm. that BBC helped uh, put out. Uh, today... This emperor penguin colony, or just seeing the emperor penguins in general, is one of the most exclusive wildlife viewing experiences on the planet, what Cork Expeditions is doing this uh, upcoming November. So we have two trips that are 14 days. Okay, yeah. 
And so we're inviting travelers almost mm-hmm. two decades after our milestone visit back in 2004 to embrace the thrill of the search mm-hmm. as we once again set out to visit this incredible mm-hmm. emperor penguin. So you're only doing it twice. That's it. We're doing it twice this wow. November. Then we got to get in on that. My goodness. Yeah. That's- yeah. And because with actually November, mm-hmm. the emperor penguin breeding cycle is a bit earlier. So I was always talking about those little chicks on the actual peninsula itself hatching yeah. um, at the end of December, beginning of January, depending on weather and depending on the the season of what mm-hmm. how warm that summer is mm-hmm. for the Antarctic summer. The emperor penguins, actually, their breeding cycle is a bit earlier. So we will be seeing emperor chicks in November oh. Um, oh, so off of Snow Hill Island. Yeah. So this emperor penguin colony, people can see the adults as well as the chicks, mm-hmm. which is really exciting. That is, that's incredible. Wow. That's something, you know, you've got to go see at least once in your life and say, I saw them when they were like this big. <laughs> well, not quite big. Amazing. And with the emperors, they do actually like little humans walking around. Mm-hmm. I don't want, mean to anthropomorphize them, but it's amazing to see how just incredible these creatures are. So I really recommend if people have seen the gorillas and have gone mm-hmm. to Rwanda to do a trip like that, uh, or maybe they've gone to see the snow leopards um in nepal or maybe they've gone and seen the uh tigers in india like i did uh years and years ago this is definitely a trip people should be thinking about Mm -hmm. but also first timers if people haven't been to antarctica before what a great trip um to to go and explore uh this amazing region uh in the Weddell sea amazing our actual ship the ultramarine that i was mentioning having 199 guests Mm -hmm. on these two trips though kathleen we're actually reducing capacity to 150 guests so you are going to get the best attention and get out there wow that's great so we're able to observe the emperor penguins Mm -hmm. and what's neat is that we have two helicopters on the ultramarine which i'll chat about in a moment yeah and so it's remarkable that we can uh, actually fly about a mile outside of the rookery and Mm -hmm. land and then we're slowly walking into the rookery and so there is a rotational basis so some guests that are in the rookery there will be guests obviously left on board we're not bringing all 150 guests Mm -hmm. but there's so much to do either on board or off the ship like paddling and other great activities while other guests are in the rookery and then we'll be switching so it's a 14 day itinerary in and out of Ushuaia Mm -hmm. Uh, but we start in Buenos Aires and there's an additional transfer package That's included, uh, um, sorry, that is an additional 995 US per person. Mm -hmm. Uh, We also have Canadian rates for those Canadian travelers as well. Uh, But it's a great charter flight that goes from Buenos Aires down to Ushuaia return Mm -hmm. and a hotel night in Buenos Aires so that all the guests are on the charter flight flying down to Ushuaia together Mm -hmm. for an additional 995 uh, US per person, which I think is great to start in uh, Buenos Aires. Yes. Why not spend a couple nights if people haven't been to Buenos Aires for a tango mm-hmm. show or walking around the streets of Buenos Aires before um, this epic itinerary? Incredible. Wow. I always love drone shots and I, you know, taking those shots from, from over above. But if you're on the helicopter, you're going to get even better than a drone shot. You're, it's your own. It's got the memory attached to it. That's incredible. That's so true. And so with the hel- helicopters, there's not really a bad seat in the helicopters. <laughs> Yeah, But I think you've uh, exactly hit on what I'd love to talk about next is our off-ship experience um, in the polar regions because Quark Expeditions actually offers more off-ship uh, experiences than any other operator in the polar regions. Mm-hmm. Uh, we get everyone a lot closer into nature with not only our expert guides and these innovative itineraries, but also with our quick deploying Zodiac uh, system, which I'll share in a moment. But we offer incredible off-ship experiences to get people even closer into the polar regions. So with Antarctica and the Arctic, we have things like the polar plunge. <laughs> yes. That's included for every guest. Would you do that, Kathleen? The I polar don't plunge? think I would, but I know my husband would. Every New Year's Day, he does the polar dip up here in Canada. So he goes in, runs in the water, dunks himself and runs back out. Um, he always says he's going to stay long, but he doesn't. <laughs> and I think jumping <laughs> off the ship would be even better. It's incredible. That would, wow, what a memory. Incredible. I know I wasn't going to do it when one of my trips and 
this 18 year old who was on a trip with her dad in Greenland. Um, he got the trip for her for a, a present for graduating high school. What a nice okay. high school present. Yes. graduation gift. And mm-hmm. she said to me when we were going to do the polar plunge, she said at lunch one day, you told me that you would do it with me. Oh no! <laughs> so I said, did I really, did I really say that? So sure enough, I did it. And I'm so glad that oh, I good. did. It's just exhilarating. Yeah. Yeah. I think it takes some convincing, but yeah. I'm worried. I mean, when are you going to have a chance to do that again? Like that's just incredible. Right. So and wow. people have just as much fun, Kathleen watching. <laughs> There you go. Uh, if they don't participate, it's just as entertaining. That's for sure. <laughs> Take pictures of the expressions on their face. And then we also have various levels of hiking and walking mm-hmm. uh, for all the different levels of activities. Right. Uh, but then we also have landing on the Greenland ice sheet on some of our Greenland itineraries, like our Greenland adventure program. Mm-hmm. But then for Antarctica and the Arctic, we have lots of Zodiac cruising opportunities and landings. So that's all included. And fl- heli flight seeing now on our ultramarine. Every guest in Antarctica gets at least one um, heli flight sightseeing excursion. Okay. On any Antarctic Peninsula trip, also areas of the Canadian Arctic and Greenland, we have heli flight seeing included. Mm-hmm. So when people are thinking about going on a trip to the polar regions, a lot is actually included. A lot of included activities. That's great. Wow. But then on a lot of Arctic and Antarctica trips, there's additional paid adventure mm-hmm. options okay. like kayaking as I see kayaking program yes. where we go out as many times as possible throughout a voyage where mm-hmm. we have actual expert guides that we've hired Kathleen that's why it's additional costs we have great guides that do yeah. specifically the sea kayaking programs mm-hmm. um or the paddling so this is an inflatable uh kayak on the left mm-hmm. there so we also have a paddling one-time paddling excursion um, that if people want to pay for an additional adventure option, that's also available on a lot of itineraries in the Arctic and Antarctica. So that's fun if people just want to try it once. Yeah. Um, and then we have stand up paddle boarding in Antarctica on a lot of uh, trips. Mm-hmm. So again, not offered on all voyages to Antarctica. So if someone is thinking about stand up paddle boarding or sea kayaking or paddling, these trips sell out, these adventure options sell out quite quickly because they are exclusive. There are small groups of 10, 12, 16, really intimate groups in the polar regions. So if someone is thinking about an additional adventure option, I highly recommend uh, seeing if something's available or offered on a particular itinerary. Yeah. And what an experience, like to go right by the icebergs there and, and just to literally be within touching distance. That's just phenomenal. Wow. I love it. And then we also have a lot of other adv- additional adventure options like heli landings in Antarctica and sometimes heli trekking, just depending on the itinerary. Mm-hmm. Um, in Greenland, we have camping on a lot of our Greenland trips like Gems of West Greenland. We also have camping in Antarctica, mm-hmm. which is really neat. A lot of uh, passengers love participating in that. I personally did not. Okay. I loved hearing the stories when everyone got back. I loved with my being in my duvet in my cabin. But a lot of people <laughs> loved camping and had yeah. stories to tell for a lifetime. Oh, I'm uh, sure. But I'd love to vlog on that. That would be incredible just to share the experience with all you guys too, following along. Incredible. Wow. And then on some trips too, we have um, like some Greenland itineraries. Mm-hmm. We have um, mountain biking too. So just depending on the itinerary, there's a lot of additional um, adventure options that are paid um, okay. that people can participate in. Wow. But a lot of this is happening on our ultramarine. So mm-hmm. the Emperor Penguin Quest trip, um, the 13-day Antarctic Explorer Cape Horn Diego Ramirez itinerary in Antarctica is also happening on this ship. Um, the 11 and 12-day Antarctic Explorer trips happening on the ship. Mm-hmm. Um, Greenland itineraries, Canadian Arctic itineraries. So this ship is absolutely incredible. I'm so excited for her. Because I've been with this company for over 14 years, Mm -hmm. and this has been a remarkable feat with Cork Expeditions, building this exclusive expedition vessel that is second to none, that is really groundbreaking in terms of what she has to offer in the uh, polar regions, built specifically Mm -hmm. for polar. So she really is designed to go beyond Kathleen, and I'm just Mm -hmm. thrilled about her. Mm -hmm. A really big feature is the internal Zodiac hangar. Uh, which quickly and safely deploys our 20 Zodiacs on the ultramarine, allowing for more off-ship spontaneity 
Mm-hmm. So we can get the zodiacs really quickly in the water. Goodness. Wow. That's I cool. loved um, a story that I had not on this vessel of ours, but in Antarctica, one, af- one evening, mm-hmm. we were all in the bar um, after a great day of two excursions in Antarctica. And the marine biologist came on the loudspeaker and said, whoever wants to go out for a third excursion, grab your parkas, grab your boots. We're going out. And we saw 40 crab eater seals gathering krill oh. at sunset in Antarctica. Oh my goodness. Wow. And this was something that the marine biologist, after traveling with us for over 17 years at that point, he had never seen. Mm-hmm. And he was so excited to get the zodiacs out that he wanted to share it with the guests. Yes. And so this is an example of small little ships mm-hmm. and really being able to quickly deploy zodiacs that type of spontaneity that Quark Expeditions is known for yeah. and get into the heart of nature for those intimate wildlife experiences, Kathleen. Mm-hmm. This is an example of why the quick deploying Zodiac system is really important. Yeah, absolutely. Incredible. Wow. What an experience. So, yeah. This unique design yeah. actually can uh, get everyone off the ship in half the time of other vessels. So Look just again, thinking about what people are wanting to experience, have as their experience in Antarctica, what vessel or the, the Arctic as well. But we have two twin engine helicopters on the ultramarine. So two twin in, uh, twin engine helicopters operated from two heli decks mm-hmm. and Quark Expeditions Kathleen has always operated helicopters in the polar regions for over 31 years. We've been doing this, but on the ultramarine, we have two. They're Airbus 145 helicopters and I love mm-hmm. that they're painted yellow. I know that's something <laughs> so small and very insignificant, but I think it is so cool. Oh, it's the brand colors. It's perfect for that. Yeah. And I love how you, the big glass, like you can see so clearly. Look at that. Wow. So the point of the helicopters too, is to go further and farther so we can experience new destinations mm-hmm. accessible only by air and enjoy a really unique aerial perspective of the polar regions. Uh, it's neat to be able to have these helicopters too, being able to fly over open water, open mm-hmm. sea and land. That's really important with helicopters. Not all helicopters, Kathleen, actually can uh, fly over open sea, which is really important. This ship also has a ready room. I used to call it a mud room, but it's a mm-hmm. great, ready room is a great name for it too. Mud room, yes. muck room. Mm-hmm. So it's neat to be able to have everyone being able to put their boots, put in their parkas and uh, so they don't have to lug them to their gorgeous cabins right. after. Um, I recommend people though, keeping and hanging on to their shell. So hanging or sorry, hanging on to their liner, okay. hanging their parkas. But I loved having my liner because you never know when you're going to get interrupted at dinner or lunch right. because of wildlife or someone might be seeing sitting in their cabin, going through their photos and in the corner of their eye, seeing an iceberg go by that they want to see and jumping out on their balcony. Yes. Mm-hmm. So highly recommend keeping a liner yeah. in the cabin at all times. Yeah, just you. so you can shoot out fast. That's smart. Yeah. And just because it's an expedition doesn't mean we have to sacrifice creature comfort. It's gorgeous, mm-hmm. spacious suites. That's an example of the balcony suite. We have all the way up to owner suites and ultramarine suites to Kathleen, mm. all outside cabins on the ultramarine. That's the introductory twin cabin, the okay. explorer suite. So gorgeous, spacious suite for um, double occupancy. Mm-hmm. Great, gorgeous cabins. We also have solo cabins. So we have solo panorama cabins on the ultramarine. We have eight of them. Mm-hmm. Outside cabins, floor to ceiling windows. Great for those solo travelers. Yeah, that's beautiful. I love that. And we have a gorgeous spa too on the ultramarine, great gym. Uh, the sauna too is uh, outside facing. So the mm-hmm. the dry sauna is great to be able to sit there, maybe after the polar plunge or a landing mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and wow. being able to witness um, some gorgeous scenery from the comfort of the sauna. Yeah. Goodness. So you're really not sacrificing any comfort, any luxury to be there. It's just absolutely gorgeous. Wow. You're in the lap of luxury and exploring the world too. What more can you ask? The yeah. perfect balance. Yes. And so Kathleen, I want to take a moment, if it's okay to share a video of yeah. the helicopters in the polar regions on the ultramarine, sure. because I think it really encapsulates um, and makes people put themselves in the experience. We have some great footage from this past Antarctic season and last year's Arctic season. Can't wait. The experience on a helicopter, it was fantastic. You can really understand the dimension of the place, how vast and big it is. 
Ultramarine is designed to go further and access places we haven't been to before. The very foundation of that build is its aviation capability and the two aircraft and the purpose-built heli decks that are on top of the ship. The Airbus H145 is an extremely modern aircraft, extremely safe, extremely capable, which make it the best aircraft for the job. The helicopter was amazing. You get a totally different view and it was absolutely beautiful. The scale of our helicopter operations is unlike any other company in the industry. We're also utilising the aircraft to offer exclusive additional options that allow you to engage in a smaller, more intimate environment in this landscape. We have options that are tailored for ourselves. It's giving me a chance to try different things with the best equipment, with the most knowledge. These people are on the top of their game. Quark Expedition gave me the chance to see Antarctica from the sky, from the seaside, and also from the land. Amazing. Wow. Look at that. And Kathleen, before we end today, our time together, I know it goes by so quickly when you're talking about incredible destinations and travel in general. But Cork Expeditions is also known for our sustainability. And one of our pillars of our polar promise that mm -hmm. we actually launched back in 2019 is our polar ambassador program. So guests uh, become polar ambassadors after their voyage can take home with them the sustainability lessons um, that they learned in the Arctic or Antarctic and apply them in their everyday lives when mm -hmm. they get back home. So that's a really big, important piece. Um, we also create strong partnerships uh, in the communities that we go to uh, to promote conservation in the polar environments. Mm -hmm. And we actually have, I love the fact that in the Arctic, we have such great relationships with the communities that we visit. But ultimately, Kathleen, our sustainability platform is about preserving yes. the polar regions yeah. for our next generation of polar travelers. Mm -hmm. Fabulous. I love that. We have a lot of offers right now okay. where people can save up to 45% off. We have a great um, escape sale um, on right now, um, a great uh, polar promotions. So please, everyone reach out to Plenty of Sunshine, or even if, you know, Kathleen, people have questions, I'm happy to jump on a call with you or them later and chat about the Arctic or Antarctica if people have specific questions. Because I know there's a lot that we talked about today mm -hmm. with just a few trips in Antarctica alone and just right. the ultramarine alone and just with our adventure options and off-ship adventure options alone. Yeah, yeah, I love that. And I thank you for that. That's just super. I love that we have that relationship that, um, you know, I can reach out to Kara at any time, should there be any questions or anything. And right away, you get the correct answer. <laughs> the one from the company, which is is awesome. That's great. So there's no guesswork involved. So thank you so much for putting that together. I greatly appreciate that. That's just oh, fabulous. And I can't wait to sail with you. It's amazing. Yes. Thank you so much, Kathleen, for this opportunity and everything you're doing here um, with your podcast and your platform. This is so great. So thank you for having me. It's an honor. Okay. Well, thank you. Goodbye, everybody. Have a great week. Thank you so much for watching this week's Cruise Chat with Kara. It was so amazing to see all of that places that they go to talk about the penguins, to have that great greeting party and that special itinerary that they have. Oh my goodness. I would love to go that incredible. They are only doing it twice and that's all they're doing. And it's just absolutely fabulous. And I love those one-off itineraries that are completely unique and amazing. And I mean, I love Cork. Cork does such a good job of of exploring into the area and making sure that you're really getting immersed with having all of their staff on board, taking you off a great small ship experience. And it's just absolutely fabulous. So thank you so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe to our channel. That way you can see when a new video comes out. I try to put a new video out every Thursday, but sometimes I'm really busy, um, you know, working with you guys and my clients. And, and sometimes they're a little bit delayed because you guys will always be my first priority, um, you know, booking your travels, making sure everything's going great. So sometimes I'm a little bit putting it out, but if you subscribe, then you'll get the notification when it does come out. Next week, I'm going to be meeting with Oceana. 
And we are going to be going over a Norway itinerary. Now, this Norway itinerary is super um, exciting to me because I'm going to be going. And I really want you guys to be able to come and to follow along with me too and to join me on my travels. So that one is going to be in July of 2024. And we're just going to be covering the itinerary. It goes, it starts in Copenhagen and goes way up to above the Arctic Circle. And that is so exciting. So I'm really excited to learn about that. And I can't wait to share with you guys too. So also remember though, that I have all these episodes on podcast form. It is Cruising the Waves podcast. So if you would like to listen to these on the go and you don't necessarily have time to be near a computer and to be watching and and following and, and seeing the images, but you still want to learn and follow along, we have a podcast. It's Cruising the Waves podcast and it's all on your favorite channels. So make sure that you go and check that out and subscribe to that. So we'll see you guys next week. Have a great week, everybody. Bye.